I think the accuracy gets better over time. I think I heard. I think the accuracy gets better over time. This seems to be performing quite well. I think I heard. This seems to be performing quite well. There is a slight delay, but that is because I am using a Raspberry Pi. I think I heard. There's a slight delay, but that is because I'm using the Raspberry Pi. The quality of the transcription depends on the quality of the microphone. I think I heard. The quality of the transcription depends on the quality of microphone. I bought this microphone at a flea market in Cambridge. I think I heard. I bought this microphone at a flea market in Cambridge. I believe I paid a quarter for it. I think I heard. I believe I paid a quarter for it. I have no complaints as a result. I think I heard. I have no complaints as the result. Let's move on to face recognition. I think I heard. Let's move on to face recognition. All right. Welcome to the face recognition portion of tonight's program. Since the last time I did this, I've done quite a bit of work in terms of changing it from just detecting a face and reporting a position to actually being able to recognize and remember that face. So here's a memorable face. And yes, she actually even greets me by name. She'll greet you by name too. I have this set up so that I can actually use a visual command or a verbal command to uh, tell the system to start taking photographs quietly in the background while it's interacting with a new person that I've introduced the system to. Uh, this allows the system to amass enough photographs of the person with different facial expressions, different positions of the head, uh, to be able to, uh, later on when the system goes to sleep, um, be able to generate uh, the mathematical file that's required in order for the system to recognize an individual uh, as opposed to just a face. Um, it stores it in a giant, what they call the pickle file. I'm not kidding. If you're not familiar with Python, um, that's okay. Right now I am working with this system. Um, I'm literally holding an eyeball attached to a very fine ribbon cable. This is not um, located in the robotic body um, simply because this is the development system. Um, this is a little bit more nimble when it comes to developing software. You'll notice on the right hand side um, the image is uh, displaying pixel counts, um, as well as a message for me about uh, active threads being generated um, because I was uh, initially having a couple of problems with some uh, uh, threads that weren't quitting when they should have. Those pixel counts are being relayed to the uh, motor control system, um, which would, in the robot, um, control the servos in the eyes uh, and the, the head and that potentially neck and upper body. Um, as the image that it was tracking was moving around in the visual field. Um, so that's why uh, you're seeing a little bit of uh, shakiness here. The frames per second that you're seeing here is uh, the same problem that I had with speech recognition in that I'm running this development system on a Raspberry Pi. Um, the live systems are going to be run on something called a Jetson TX2, and as far as I understand, they've come out with a TX3, um, which going to be 10 times or more faster than this system, uh, which should allow for nearly real-time uh, speech recognition as well as uh, visual identification response. There's a lot going on here. Um, most of these things are running parallel with each other. Uh, I have yet to have a problem with overheating or taxing the processor, but it is a little slow um, because it is, after all, a $35 Raspberry Pi. In the future, there is also something coming out. I'm uh, looking at a uh, campaign coming out, a crowdfunded campaign called Stereo Pi, um, which is going to take care of quite a bit of the things uh, for me for coordinating both eyes 
uh, so that I can get full 3D depth perception um, and a number of things going on with that. I'm also using a messaging system now, which is allowing me uh, to be able to have individual scripts that talk to each other over um, TCP nodes within um, either within or between um, the different uh, actual hardware nodes that I have running in here. Um, this is allowing multiple things to run parallel. Um, in addition to face detection, recognition, I will also have uh, an enormous number of object detection and recognition functions going on here. Uh, I'm looking currently at something on the order of 150 common objects that it will be able to um, recognize and detect. Um, I'm also working with a Tesseract system that allows the system to be able to recognize um, print text on a page, including books, and actually read from uh, books. So this is uh, where we're at right now. I haven't had the time to do the development uh, that I had been doing before. Uh, work has been very demanding. Um, but as it turns out, work is demanding that I do um, some videos uh, to present uh, some of our material. And, uh, so I'm taking advantage of uh, this as being the mechanism by which I teach myself the uh, software to do the stuff that I've got to do. So now I'm back into doing videos again. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope to have something more exciting for you next time. Most of the stuff I'm doing right now is all software, um, a lot of language processing, um, a lot of uh, tailoring things, making programs talk to each other over the network, things that are not uh, sexy to videotape, um, but uh, unless you like code, in which case it's pretty cool. I like code, so I'm happy. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon.